AS12, income tax. Now, when it comes to this accounting standard, it's very primary, fundamental for financial reporting. And when we, we're going to take this a, a, a step further in corporate reporting, you are not there yet, so let's just stay with what we are here. In every examination, you are going to deal with this animal in the kingdom. So it is very important for you to understand all the things that there is about this accounting standard. But in, I, in financial reporting, we just give you an introduction, something small. So you've got to make sure that you understand that thing so that when you are preparing the income statement, you will know the tax figure that you are going to be bringing there and also about other issues. So let's start from here. Let's say this is our income statement extract. We have profit before tax to be $600 million and the tax 30% and I put there $200 million and profit of the tax is 400. Now, if you should calculate the contingency 30% of 600, it is not 200, rather it is 180. What does this mean? This means that for every entity you pick, when you pick their financial statement, the tax figure you see there is not the tax figure for that whatever percentage of their tax payable. What it means then is that this tax figure here has some components. In other words, certain things were brought in order for us to get this to embrace. So what are these components of the tax figure we always put in the income statement? One, it includes the current year tax. Which is always a provision, though, current year tax provision. Two, over or under provision of tax. Three, deferred tax, which is my favorite area. And then four, movement in deferred tax. So these four things are the components of the tax figure that is put into the income statement. So let me walk you through one after the other. The first one is not magical because it is the current year tax provision, which means based on our accounting profit that we have made, we will estimate that we will pay a tax of this for the current year profit. So the current year tax provision, meaning, for instance, 30% of this 600, the 180 becomes what? A current year tax provision. So that will be brought into the tax figure for the year. But also, there is also what we call over or under provision of tax. Why is it so? Because companies pay tax one year in arrears, meaning, the tax of year one will be paid in year two, and it follows in that order. So, if, for instance, you provide that you want to pay a tax, so you make a provision that you pay a tax of $180, and the tax authority comes, they prepare your financial statement, and they realize that, no, you are very, very, very shrewd, so you are supposed to pay a tax of Something. So from the tax authority they prepared, you're supposed to pay a tax of say 280. What does it mean? What does it mean? You provided for 180, but you are paying what? 280. The difference of hundred dollars will be treated as over under provision of what? Tax. It means you have under provided for tax. So in the current year, that under provision of tax will be added to the current year tax provision that you have made. In other words, it will be subtracted from your expenses. This hundred. So this extra hundred that you are paying will be added to the current year tax or will be subtracted from expenses. The reverse is true. 
You provided for 280. The tax authority came and you are paying 100. Meaning you have over provided by $180. When you over provide, meaning that you will add it back to your profit or subtract it from tax liabilities. I hope you are getting the state. Very important. So, one, if we provide for 180, but the tax authority says we should pay 280, then we have under provided for the tax liability. If we under provide for the tax liability, the, treated, the treatment is that it is going to be added to the current year tax or subtracted from expenses. Two, if we provide 280 and the tax authority says we should pay $100, that means we have over provided. So the difference will be added to profit or subtracted from current tax payable. So that is the second element there. So you can see that the first and the second is really not too magical. But deferred tax is where the magic starts. And that is where you I love. You subtract from current payable. What? You the, the second one. Yes. Yeah, it should be subtracted from current tax payable. Current tax. Yes, current tax. So the third thing is deferred tax. Now, I'm not going to bother you here with a lot of English, a lot of definitions, and a lot of things. I like to hit it on the head straight up, and we get to understand it. So make sure you follow me here. What is deferred tax? The issue about deferred tax rises. So before I even give you the definition of deferred tax, let me give you the background and what it, what it comes by. The issue about deferred tax rises because of the treatment of non-current assets. When I talk about non-current assets, I also mean things, both tangible non-current assets, as well as investments of a company. So when I talk about investments of a company, I am actually referring to things such as investment in a subsidiary or investment in an associate. So when it comes to how we account or we treat tangible non-current assets and investments, then also not only non-current assets, sometimes other transactions in the financial statement of the company, the way the entity carries it is going to be different from the way the tax authority views it. Make sure I get this foundation right. The way a transaction or non-current assets, that is, tangible non-current assets or investments, are carried by an entity is different from the way it is carried by the tax authority. What does it mean? All other things being equal, entities are going to carry assets usually at their carrying value. What does this mean? It means that the entity, if it is a tangible asset, is going to be carrying the assets at either the cost or fair value minus any accumulated what? Depreciation or impairment. Sounds good? IAS 16, IAS 38. This is how they're going to be carrying it if it is a tangible asset. If, on the other hand, it is an investment, the company is going to carry the investment, especially in an associate, at what we call, the, using what we call the equity method. Using the equity method, or if you want, at fair value. So investments will always be carried at their fair value. Listen carefully. The tax authority 
when it comes to tangible non-current assets, they don't know depreciation. So tax authority doesn't depreciate the assets. Rather, what they give is for capital allowance. So whilst the entity is looking at the carrying value of the asset, the tax authority is looking at the tax base of the asset, TB. So the tax base of the asset is going to be the cost of the asset minus any capital allowance, accumulated capital allowance. That is how entities carry things, uh, tangible assets. When it comes to investments, the tax authorities don't carry investments at their fair value. The tax authority carry the investment at cost. So you can see that when it comes to tangible assets, when it comes to investments, the entity carries it separately from the tax authority. It is this difference between the perspective of the entity and the tax authority that leads into what we refer to as temporary difference. And the difference between this and that. Yes. Yes. So what then is temporary difference? The temporary difference is the difference between the carrying value of an asset or of an investment minus the tax base of the investment, TB. Slow down. Any question so far? Sounds good. which is capital allowance. So it could, this scenario actually relates whether it is about what the uh, investment or it's about the, the tangible non-current asset. So what are we saying? We saying that when we are dealing with transactions, the way the entity looks at it is going to be different from the way the tax authority considers it. It is that difference that creates what we refer to as temporary difference. So the temporary difference is the difference between the carrying value and the tax base of the transaction or the assets. Now, it is this temporary difference that leads us into what we call deferred tax. So I'm going to put TD here. So before TD. So we will say that the deferred tax is simply the current, sorry, the temporary difference TD times TR, the tax rate. What does that mean? Let me explain that. Deferred tax simply, you see when we use the word deferred, meaning we are putting something in the future. In other words, we are just finding out the tax implication of a certain transaction today. And recognizing it today, even though the tax implication will actually not affect us today. So more or less like we are providing for it today. Let me give you an illustration. If you tell 
the tax authority. So let's assume I'm the tax authority that your asset is being carried at two thousand dollars. From the tax authority perspective, the asset may be carried at maybe thousand five hundred. Meaning your temporary difference is going to be five hundred dollars. What you are telling the tax authority is that if you are selling this asset today, you will sell it at what? $2,000. Meaning you will make a profit of $500. Are you selling the asset? No. Held for sale. It's not a held for sale. You are not selling. But you need to make a provision for it as though you are what? Going to be selling the asset. And find out the difference between their capital allowance and their not the depreciation that you are finding. And that is what is creating this temporary difference. Then you provide for it. So it won't be a liability you pay now, but you recognize it in the books of financial statement as deferred tax under non-current liability. So what do I mean? Deferred tax is your temporary difference times what? The tax rate. So if the tax rate is 25%, then our deferred tax will be equal to 500 times what? 25%. The tax rate, DR, is what I have here. I'll come back to this in a moment. Now, the issue about deferred tax can still be divided into two. In other words, we can have a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. There is a deferred tax asset when the carrying value of the asset is less than the tax base of the asset. Or when your temporary difference is negative. So if your temporary difference is negative or your carrying value is less than the tax base, that leads us to what we call deferred tax assets. So in my scenario here, meaning you are carrying the asset at 2,000, that's the carry value, but then